everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 2 Deluxe Class Crash Bar. Let's start off by taking a look at the packaging and then we'll get into the review. So of course up front we have Transformers on the side, a really cool arc shot of Crash Bar in his motorcycle mode, pretty much leaping into battle. We have Crash Bar and an Autobot symbol done in white text. We actually have the Transformers Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom. We have an open owner displaying the figure in the packaging. On the top there's actually a QR code, so if you do scan that, that will show his stats. On this side here we actually have two really cool arc shots, a close-up of his face, and a more wide shot of Crash Bar in a kind of a running battle pose with his blaster and sort of spinning wheel axe weapon, which I think looks pretty cool. On the back side, there is several product shots. One of his robot and alt mode. He transforms in 15 steps, and there's a product shot of the Evo Fusion gimmick that I will be showing a little bit later in this video. And the final product shot is actually all of his pieces kind of spread out and separate, which I think is pretty cool. And on the final side here, we actually have half of the Legacy Evolution artwork. So if you do get another deluxe like Shrapnel and put both boxes together, you can complete the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. So here we have Crash Bar in his motorcycle mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very front with that front wheel section right there. Mostly done in gray, but there's actually some really nice details like these spikes at this intersection right here. There's also some spring and kind of pipe or pole detailing right there as well. There's some more spikes at this top section done in kind of a grayish brown mixture, which is pretty cool. There's also the section right here with some more kind of reddish orange uh, spikes as well. There's also the handlebars picked out in gray, and the section can actually move side to side, which is pretty cool. So you can actually have them turning a corner or, of course, you know, jumping into battle and kind of recreating the box art which is pretty cool um, it would have been nice if this section actually moved with the wheel unfortunately the wheel is actually in a fixed position it doesn't move at all it would have been nice if these actually moved simultaneously but unfortunately that's not the case the uh, handlebars can also move up and down if you want to but that is mostly due to transformation if you actually do look at the side view here there's actually some really cool flame detailing kind of, kind of done in an orangish red mixture there's also of course some yellow for the seat and it's actually really cool how glossy and reflective it is speaking of accessories I actually did start with them on in this case for this situation because if you have all the accessories off of the motorcycle there's actually quite a bit of kibble and empty gaps so if you leave them on it's, it's actually probably for the best but of course i'll take a look at these accessories in greater detail a little bit later in the video whenever he's in his robot mode but of course he has some really cool kind of pipes or smokestacks you can imagine some really cool flames shooting out the back of them um we do have these huge rocket boosters, which are pretty cool. As you can see, of course, there is several other mech tech ports. I'm actually putting them by the book, by the instructions. So if you want to, you can kind of customize this however you wish. But again, I'm just going to go by the book, by original. But they overall do look pretty cool. He actually does have a fifth accessory, which is probably my favorite. In this mode, it doesn't seem like much. In the robot mode, it actually becomes something pretty cool. It's actually the back wheel. So again, as I said, it doesn't look like much, but it actually turns into a really cool weapon. Probably my favorite accessory of this figure. And of course, the complaints. So probably one of the the main complaints I've heard is actually the back section of the motorcycle. So some people think it's a bit obvious that it's the foot. As you can see, this is obviously one of the legs. This is the foot. This is the heel spur. It's a valid complaint. It actually doesn't bother me because, of course, by concept, by design, the um, Junkions are weird, you know, Transformers. They have a ton of, you know, metal and scraps, ra random flames, you know, pipes sticking out, huge weapons, spikes. So I think it's actually kind of cool. It's mismatched. It's kind of weird. Again, it's a valid complaint. I understand it. It personally does not bother me. Probably the main complaint I have with the figures, unfortunately, there is no kickstand. Not that I know of, maybe there's a hidden one, but from what I've seen from reviews and videos and me examining this figure, there is no kickstand, which I think is a bit unfortunate. There is actually a fix though, so of course you can have him roll the uh, wheels roll pretty well. You can, you know, have some fun with it, but if you want to have it in like a fixed position to, you know, take a picture or just for a display, if you just push the wheel a little bit more forward, the bottom of the motorcycle will actually touch the surface of your table, desk, wherever, and it will stay in a fixed position. This actually is very helpful for stop motions and pictures because of course balancing a two-wheeled motorcycle is not fun but that is pretty much it for the details and accessories for this motorcycle let's now get down to a few quick comparisons here he is with his junkie on mate scrap hook um so I have to say right now, I think the superior of the two is probably Scrap Hook. He comes with more accessories. It does kind of seem like they spent more time and detail and attention on uh, Scrap Hook. I have a reason why. You might think I'm crazy. I have a reason why. Because, of course, Scrap Hook was the first junkie on of Legacy Evolution. It was, you know, from Wave 1. So I think they wanted to spend a lot of attention and time on their first figure, you know, to get people interested, you know, have them stay for the entire, you know, three or four waves of Legacy. I'm pretty sure there's actually going to be another junkie on in Wave 3 in a Voyager class. So they might have done that 
content just to get people, you know, tagged along, you know, for the the long run. That's just my theory. I think it is a better figure. It just does seem like they just put more time and attention on it. That's just my opinion. Not saying Crash Bar is a bad figure. I still highly recommend Crash Bar. Just in comparison between the two, I think this is the better figure. That's just my opinion. Let me know in the comment section down below between the two, which one do you like more? And of course, I am really looking forward to that Voyager junk guy. Maybe even so, if we get a wave five or maybe in wave four, we'll get a leader junk guy. I think that would be pretty cool to see. And now for one final cool, final, um, excuse me, final vehicle mode comparison. Here he is with Crosscut. His review's on the channel right now, so of course, make sure you go check that out after this one. And I will, of course, actually very, very soon complete Wave 2. Shrapnel is actually on its way, so make sure you stay tuned for that review on the channel coming very, very soon. And I think they look pretty cool side by side. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this vehicle mode. So let's now get down to transformation. What you're going to do is remove the accessories. They can be a bit hard. Of course, they're just held on by um, pegs and ports. So you just kind of got to wiggle them out. I do apologize if there is a sudden jolt so just you know pop that off because as you can see there is uh, uh, ports there and pegs right there same thing on the other side so just slowly wiggle it off there we go as for the pipes or smokestacks whatever you call them you just unhinge these so there is actually a uh, slot right there and there is a tab on this intersection right there and of course there is a post and a port using the robot mode hand and just removing these and again i put these on by the instructions there is a lot of mech tech ports you can put them on however you wish so now for transformation what you're going to do is actually get the foot section here and push this through then you can actually collapse the bike handles just like that and then what you can actually do is unhinge this so you can see there is tabs there and there is slots right there so on my copy of the figure let me know if this is your figure is like this if you have this figure yet um the hinge on this section actually is so tight so i usually have to kind of manually do it as you can see it's slowly starting to pop off so i typically just kind of remove it and push it up myself because it is such a tight hinge i'm not entirely sure why it might just be my copy let me know if yours is like that in the comment section down below then what you're going to do is of course get the leg just hinge it down then you can fold up the wheel just like that and there we have one of the legs and the feet all done as for the second one, just hinge this up. And yeah, interesting enough, this one is, you know, it's not too tight, it's not too loose, it's actually perfect, so a bit interesting why the other one's so tight. And then of course, the same process, flip that wheel up, and here we have the legs all done. Now for the top portion, you're just going to use the waist swivel, just swivel that like that. Then you can get the arms, just untab them from the back. How these are held in is of course, there is a tap at the shoulder and a slot right there, so just hinge these forward just like that, and then tab them into place. Then you can hinge the arms down how these were held into place there's no like official or set tab you just kind of use the spike and you have it inserted into the hand then rotate the hand using the wrist swivel same thing on the other side just rotate it around as for the last step you're just going to pop the head up and here we have crash bar in his robot mode of course without all of his accessories but let's take a look at the details here we have Crash Bar in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very top with that head sculpt. Really cool kind of metal, sandy brown color for the main helmet section. There's some more dark brown for the horns or kind of antlers, whatever you call them. There's actually some silver for this crest section and the face. There's actually some black for the uh, mustache and goatee, and there's some red for the visor. So there's some more of that kind of sandy brown uh, metal uh, color for the shoulders and the form. I really do like that. There's some cool spikes to an orange, and there's some kind of silverish gray for the bicep and the hands. I do I do like the chest. I do like the almost headlight design. I'm not sure if they were going for that or intentional. I really do not know. It looks pretty cool. I think it's a bit too symmetrical, too, um, you know, identical. I think they should have done a bit more mismatch. That's just my opinion. But I do like the headlight design with the Autobot symbol. Nice silver, yellow, and red. Some venting detailing. Of course, we have the entire stomach region kind of done in a greenish gray color. As for the legs, I really do like the mismatch design with the flames and the yellow. As for the feet, of course, they're actually a different mold as well. And of course, from the back, pretty similar. Of course, both the wheels just stuck back here. One of them is an accessory, so you can remove that and place it somewhere else if you want to. I'll cover that in just a sec. But overall, cable-wise, not that bad. Of course, if you count the wheels, then go ahead. But as for the back, pretty clean. Not much hollowness or anything sticking out. So overall, a pretty well-designed and compact figure. So now for articulation, the head can look up and down, side to side. 
and tilt side to side as well as for of course the arm it can rotate all the way around it can also move out and in there is bicep rotation elbow bends way past 90 on a single hinge that's really impressive also there is a wrist rotation but i do have a slight minor complaint about it because of course if you follow the transformation you actually do rotate the hand around unfortunately it does become slightly loose and i've actually had one of the hands pop off of course you do just slide it back in place i just want you to be aware of that there is a uh, wrist uh, waist rotation i mean but it's actually very tight on my copy as for of course the legs they can kick forward they can also kick back and out to the side so the knee bend is a bit limited really due to the wheels you can of course fully bring that out and you can get a better knee bend that way there is also a swivel and of course there is an ankle pivot side to side and uh, there is also uh, rotation forward and back that's on this foot it's slightly different with the other because as you can see of course they are differently molded so there is some rotation forward and slightly side to side it's a bit less than this foot as you can see there's actually sections kind of blocking it so there's a bit of different articulation for each leg but overall i'd say pretty good for a deluxe classifier of course this is kind of like a modulator or fossilizer typically these figures are pretty articulated because they separate into pieces so you're you're going to expect that and i have to say the joints are pretty tight typically unfortunately with the fossilizers the running concern and running trend with those figures is the joints were very loose tons of pieces would pop off all the time but on this figure i'm very impressed with how tight the joints are some of them are actually probably too tight for my liking but now for accessories of course i briefly covered them before he actually comes with these two really cool smokestacks or kind of pipes sort of going to call them and these can soar in several different ways of course they're just the typical peg and ports so you can plug them on the legs if you want to the forearms the hands the shoulders i typically do buy the book and i actually put them on the back so you just use that uh, post right there on the port and you can plug them on the back like that and i think that is pretty cool unfortunately these are actually not blast piece compatible i wish they were so you could actually have them flames you know shooting out the back i think that'd be pretty cool but i guess you can just imagine it but i really do like that look in my opinion now for his next accessory the fifth one i uh, previously mentioned earlier so you're actually going to remove the wheel from back here just using this hinge just like that and then just separate that as you can see of course there's a post on each side you actually have to do this a specific way so this post the smaller one goes on this side and the one with the screw goes back there so make sure you do that properly and then of course just close that up and this actually becomes kind of like a shuriken um i have to say this feature on this one actually works better um on this than prowl I actually recently reviewed prowl his shurikens of course had that feature where all the blades uh kind of uh, moved or like uh expanded or you know whatever they call uh came out at the same time it sometimes worked one of them worked one of them really did not i have to say this one works a lot better probably because of course the size this is much a, a much bigger accessory than prowls but i really do like it this is definitely my favorite accessory so of course you just kind of get your nail just bring one out and then of course the other two will follow i'm going to try and not cover the accessory with my big hands but that is pretty cool of course i'm going to show it again so it all brings them out at the same time that works very very well so you're going to use the smaller peg or post whatever you're going to call it and of course you can plug this wherever you want i like the forum and i think that looks pretty cool not a big fan of the huge exposed screw but i do like this feature and it does spin i think that looks pretty cool in my opinion again works very well <laughs> um, i think i would have been fine if they had just given prowl some huge shurikens if it worked this well i would have been fine with it and i'm going to show you how you store it back so you just of course just collapse the uh, blades just go back here of course open this up make sure the screw is going in first like that there's a specific way uh, to put it back in and then of course you just collapse like that you can have it a little bit more against the leg if you want to or a little bit more out of course it does allow better articulation but now for his remaining two accessories the huge cannons again there is uh like three pegs or posts on each of these so they can go literally anywhere i actually prefer the forums so you can actually tab them on there like that like huge kind of gauntlets whatever you want to call them that looks pretty cool in my opinion so you can definitely bring the rain definitely bring some firepower to this fight so let's now get down to a few comparisons here he is with his junkion mate scrap hook um I have to say, size-wise, uh, Scrap Hook, I'm, this is like the second time I've compared them, and it still surprised me. He is a much bigger, bulkier figure than uh, Crash Bar. Um, it just appears that way, but they do look pretty cool side-by-side. Side. Still, I think they're both uh, must-buy figures. Again, my opinion is I think this is the superior figure. I do really like the mismatch design. I think the chest is a bit too symmetrical for my liking. I do like, of course, the mismatched leg. That's just my opinion, of course. They can kind of go off and on. It just seems too clean, too simple for the chest. 
So that's just my opinion. Again, let me know in the comment section down below between the two, which Junkion do you like more? And now for one file comparison, here he is with Prowl. And his review is on the channel right now, so make sure you go check that out after watching this one. And that is pretty much it for the comparisons and this robot mode. So let's now get down to the reverse transformation. So now for reverse transformation, what you're going to do is get the hand and just rotate all the way around just like that. Then you can actually bring the arm up. You're just supposed to align one of the spikes into the hand just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. So just rotate the hand around, get the arm, rotate it up, and of course align the spike just like that. Then you can actually push the head in all the way and it should fit into that groove just like that. Then untab the shoulder just like that. And then there of course is a slot on the shoulder and there's a slot right there. So just tab that into place, make sure it clicks perfectly like that, and there we go. And then what you want to do is get the waist joint, rotate it like that, just to make sure, make sure the section is, of course, facing the uh, flame leg, just to make sure you're, of course, aligning it correctly. Then what you want to do is actually rotate the legs in like this, and then, of course, you can actually go to the foot, bring the handlebars out like that, and then just hinge this section through, and then it will, of course, form the front of the motorcycle. Then you can get the wheel, push that forward like that, and there we go. So here is kind of the hard part. Again, this could just be kind of a my copy type of thing. I mentioned this in the normal transformation segment. So for some reason, on my copy, the hinge at this section, you're supposed to, of course, collapse the leg in. It is so incredibly tight on my copy. So typically what I do is I kind of just do it myself. I just separate the leg, of course, and just untab it and hinge it in. I think it's a lot easier. Let me know in the comment section down below if your copy of this figure is like that. It could just be mine. And of course, as you can see, there's tabs on this section right here and slots on the arms so just align those up just like that and there we have the front of the motorcycle all done then what you can do with the back leg of course is the same thing for some reason it's not tight at all with this one so just of course slightly fold this up like that so just get this all straightened out and then of course we can add the accessories to your liking so let me just kind of put them down there for now we can add these huge big rocket boosters so of course there is a port and port and two pegs so just align that's up like that. There we go. Same thing on the other side. So just align the uh, posts and ports. There we go. As for the whole pipes, you're just going to get the peg from one of them and you're going to tab it into the hand from the robot mode. So just plug that into place like that. And then there is a tab on this section and a slot on the body of the motorcycle. And that should just slide into place like that. As for the last one, same thing on the other side. And just to line that up. And there we have the reverse transformation of the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 2 Crash Bar. So now that he's back in his motorcycle mode, let's actually get on to the Evo Fusion gimmick. So let's now get down to Crash Bar's Evo Fusion gimmick. So it's actually kind of combining Scrap Hook and Crash Bar together. So of course you can completely customize this if you want. All I'm going to show is actually the gimmick that they show in the instructions. Again, that's of course just by the book, but you can completely mix and match this if you want to. So first up, what you're going to want to do is actually remove this crane piece on the back. Then you can actually remove the saw piece as well. Then you can actually take this section right here and just split this and take off the arm just like that. And then you're going to push this flap down just like that. Remove this front portion of the car as well and then of course put that off to the side. Then what you want to do is take of course the front portion of the motorcycle and the back portion of the motorcycle and put them at the front and back of scrub hook as well. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now. Then what you're going to do is of course just remove this just like that and then you're actually going to have to remove the huge uh, kind of cannons or rocket boosters just to separate them like that and then of course we can take this piece as well and then put the rest of this off to the side like that and then what you're going to do is get this peg here like that plug this in the front sometimes it can be a bit hard to align just align the peg and post up just like that and then you're going to get the back portion here doing the same thing of course that peg and port system just getting this from the back here 
and tabbing that into place. And for this mode, you're actually going to want to collapse the foot just like that. And then this just plugs into place. And there we have the Evo Fusion gimmick. Of course, this is by the instructions. It's a pretty, pretty crazy looking. Um, I'm not a big, the biggest fan of this. Of course, again, you can customize this if you want to. You can completely change this, do a ton of crazy stuff you want to. But this is how Hasbro shows it. So that is pretty much it for Crash Bar's Evo Fusion gimmick. So let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 2 Deluxe Class Crash Bar. Starting in the motorcycle mode, I actually really do like it. I'm actually going to start off with the complaints. So the first one is, unfortunately, there is no kickstand, which I have to say, whenever they do this, it never really makes any sense because they could have easily attached one, uh, one somewhere because, of course, what do you need? A small piece of plastic in like a pin or a hinge, and there you have a kickstand. There is actually a fix for it, though, so I do give Hasbro credit where credit is due. I'm not sure if they purposely did this, but it does work. So if you're wondering how to actually have the motorcycle cycle you know in place or stay still for pictures or display just have uh, just push the front wheel a little bit more forward and then of course all this kibble on the bottom of the motorcycle will actually touch the surface that you have the figure on and then of course it will stay still which is really nice my second complaint is unfortunately there is actually a really cool feature where this uh, portion right here where the handlebars it actually moves side to side unfortunately it actually is not connected to the wheel so the front wheel is actually fixed into place it would have been nice if they both actually move simultaneously so of course you could actually have them turning to the side or doing a really cool battle pose again i wouldn't say that's a complaint more like a want um a complaint actually is the accessories. So I do like all the accessories that are included with this figure, but I have to say, I think they rely a little bit too much on them in this motorcycle mode, because if you take all the accessories off, it's pretty ugly from the side view. There's actually quite a bit of kibble visible. They actually cover up some of the hands and the remote mode kibble and the, the arm kibble if you take them off. So a bit unfortunate there. I do like the accessories. As I said, just I think they rely a little bit too much on them, because if you take them off, there's a lot of kibble and empty gaps visible. I do like the fifth accessory, though. Very creative how one of the accessories actually forms the back wheel. You never would have guessed it from this mode. You can barely even tell it's an accessory, but in other mode, it becomes something very, very cool. I do like the flame detailing, and I do like how mismatched it is. Really cool uh, entire back portion. I know some people have complained how it's kind of visible, but the back portion is actually one of his legs. I actually kind of like it because it's weird. It's kind of crazy. There's tons of mismatched designs. I do like all the spikes, the handlebars. Really good bike mode, in my opinion. Um, now getting down to transformation, I think overall pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say it's complex or hard. Um, what's actually really nice about these Junkions is a lot of people complained about the you know modulators and uh, fossilizers because you had to separate all the pieces. People didn't like parts forming. It's never really bothered me. I don't really care if it does or not. And this one you still can. If you want to completely take it apart and transform it from the ground up, you can. But a part of these figures, like Scrap Hook in this one, you can actually leave all the pieces attached and still transform it, which is a really nice feature for people who do not like parts forming. Um, for the robot mode, I actually really do like it. Of course, you can store the accessories in several different ways. You can have the huge cannons on the forms, the hands, the shoulders. Same goes with the pice. The fifth one is actually really cool. You um, actually get the wheel and it transforms into a sort of a shuriken. Of course, you can store the shuriken on his arm, his forearm. You can actually still keep it as a wheel if you want to and keep it on his back leg, which is what I typically do because it is kind of hard to actually position with him if you want to have more of a minimalistic display. I don't have huge grand displays like you used to. I kind of just keep them on a shelf. So I typically do kind of keep it on his back leg. But if you want to have a ton of space, you can do that. Um, I have to say the feature with this one uh, actually works probably better than Prowl because as we all know, Prowl's uh, shurikens, the blade is supposed to kind of like, you know, expand or fold out all at the same time. There's like three blades. It works okay with Prowl. It actually works very, very well with this one. I wish it would uh, kind of was the same for both figures. It would have been nice if this figure actually came with two. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, Articulation is actually pretty good. Of course, as I've said before, these figures literally separate into pieces by design, by nature. So, of course, the articulation is going to be pretty good. Um, you know, wrist rotation, waist rotation, uh, ankle pivot. Interesting enough, of course, both legs are different molds and different designs. So, the articulation is actually slightly different or varying between the two, which that's perfectly fine by me because none of them are really worse or better. They're both pretty well articulated. So, you can put them in some really cool poses. Um, I'd say literally probably the only downside or complaint of mine is unfortunately the knee bend. So the wheels actually are, of course, on the back of the leg. So the knee bend is slightly restricted. So you do have to move a few things out of the way to get some proper poses or the proper knee bend. But everything else is perfectly fine. Also, another really good thing is the joints. The joints are very tight. Unfortunately, the fossilizers were actually very, very well known for extremely loose joints. Because again, they separated by design. You had to separate them to transform them. There was, of course, the whole fossil 
cast lines are kind of armor gimmicks, so they were very loose most of the time. Um, because most of the joints were literally just posts or kind of hinges or screws. So really glad to see with this figure, they're nice and tight. Um, Scrap Poke, I really didn't have any complaints about. His joints were, you know, I would say average or not that loose, but this one is actually pretty good. Some of them I would say are almost maybe a slight bit too tight for my liking. Um, of course, as for his Evo Fusion gimmick, you can actually combine him with Scrap Poke, the previous Junkion from uh, Wave 1, which I guess is okay. I've never really liked the whole, you know, combining feature sure they did that kind of like with um, the fossilizers and the modulators you could attach them to the figures which I thought was okay there was a few times I liked it like once in a blue moon but I barely will ever use this feature because I usually display the figure separately and in the robot mode so maybe once in a while I'll do it but most of the time I don't it's okay of course I just showed the one by the instructions by Hasbro's you know instruction by what they decided or wanted to do you can completely customize this you can have them combine in the robot mode they're all modes and I'm, um, I'm assuming actually we're going to get a third uh, Junkion coming out in wave three pretty soon so you can come on all three figures together and make some huge creation if you want to. I'm just not that type of collector. It's just not my thing. I don't know. Let me know if you'd like to do that in the comment section down below and you can create some really cool things but again I'm just not I just don't really like doing it. Um I won't, my, I won't really take any points away or deduct anything because of that. That's just how I am. I just don't like it. So, but um, as a figure, it's pretty good. I still have to say I think Scrap Hook is the uh, the better Junkion. It just seems like there's some design aspects in some parts of the figure. It seems like they put more focus and attention on than Crash Bar. I don't know why. It just kind of seems like that. There's just a few things here and there. Um, that just don't make sense to me, but still a figure I do highly recommend. I hope you enjoyed this review. Of course, Shrapnel's review is coming very soon on the channel, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think this figure, and of course, between the two junk guns we've gotten so far, which one do you like more, Crash Bar or Scrap Hook? And I'll see you next time.